Did your parents ever have the talk with you? I'm guessing most of yours didn't. So today, let's talk about sex. Feeling uncomfortable? I can understand. Because in India, we're not huge fans of talking openly about sex. Not even to educate our own children. Most Indian children and adolescents receive sex education in the form of indirect messages from many sources, some of which have undesired negative effects on them. This can be avoided if we implement Comprehensive Sex Education, or CSE, in schools. CSE intends to impart age-appropriate and medically accurate information on a broad set of topics related to sex and sexuality, including human development, closeness, consent, decision-making, disease prevention, abstinence, and contraception. CSE is critical because children and adolescents are highly gullible to sexual exploitation. Global estimates published in the year 2002 by the World Health Organization show that 150 million girls and 73 million boys under the age of 18 had experienced forced sexual intercourse or other forms of sexual violence. In 2007, India's Ministry of Women and Child Development presented the results of a study carried out in 13 states of the country. These were its findings. 21.9% child respondents reported facing extreme forms of sexual abuse and 50.8% other forms of sexual abuse. Of all the victims studied, 58.3% were boys and 41.7% were girls. 40% of these victims were between 5 to 12 years of age and 50% of the abusers were familiar people, cousins, uncles, friends, and classmates. The statistics are alarming, but how can we stop such incidents from occurring? Well, the children need to be empowered with the right education. In 2005, the government of India formulated a homegrown program called the Adolescence Education Program, or AEP, in association with UNICEF and the National AIDS Control Organization, or NACO. However, when this program was introduced in schools affiliated to state education boards, it was refuted on the grounds that its explicit content was contrary to Indian culture and morality. As a reaction to similar protests, AEP was banned by 12 state governments, including the larger states of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, and Gujarat. After the ban, a team was set up to make the content more culturally acceptable. NACOR revised it by dropping the illustrations deemed controversial and omitting words such as intercourse, condoms, and masturbate. Sadly, however, in spite of revisions, the curriculum remains banned even today in as many as five states for fear of cultural pollution. We Indians keep harping about the purity and greatness of our culture, but culture cannot be followed blindly. Remember that our culture once allowed us to beat the shit out of anyone from a lower caste, even if their shadow fell on us. Such cultural values are not going to save anyone from STDs and unwanted pregnancies. Instead, we need to establish a culture of free communication. We need to talk to the youth and tell them what they must know. Worldwide statistics show that around 240 people contract HIV every hour. India has the third largest number of people living with HIV in the world. 2.1 million at the end of 2013. That is one out of every 600 people. These figures indicate that we really need effective and comprehensive sex education to ensure a healthy and safe life, not just for children, but for everyone. Imparting sex education in an appropriate and culturally sensitive manner at school level can help prepare the youth to face the challenges of adulthood, and it should be a national priority. Introducing sex education should not only be important, but mandatory, and we should all work towards it. There are a lot of kids out there who need to know the difference between right and wrong. Don't you want to help them? Then say yes to CSE.